I'm David, and I welcome you to the Piping Quiz Show. The topic of the quiz show is the various piping codes and standards used in the industries. I've two participants with me, Ms. Onya and Ms. Barty. So, please give a warm welcome to both of them. <laughs> now coming to the context of the quiz show, there will be two rounds for this quiz show visually round one and round two. Round one, which is the beginning round will comprise of questions of least difficulty and will be called as warm-up round. In this round altogether 10 questions will be asked, 5 questions from each contestant, asked one by one. Round 1 questions will be of 10 points each. Round 2, which is termed as get an edge, will also have 10 questions each and will have two options provided to the contestants. Get an edge will carry a penalty of half of the marks associated with the questions, for every incorrect answer. For the round 1, first question which is of 10 points is posed to Ms. Onya. ASMEB 31.11 Slurry Transportation Piping Systems, recently got superseded by which piping code? ASME Piping Code for Slurry Transportation Piping Systems that is B31.11 got superseded by ASME B31.4. Hence B31.4 since 2012 edition is now called Pipeline Transportation Systems for Liquids and Slurries. Well that's the correct answer and Ms. Onya earns 10 points. Now, next question to Ms. Barty. What are the two ASME piping codes for pipeline? Well, one is ASME B31.4 for pipeline transportation systems for liquids and slurries while the other is gas transmission and distribution piping systems. Well we've second correct answer and Ms. Barty too earns 10 points. Moving to the third question of the round, meant for Ms. Onya. How many sections does ASME Boiler and Vessel Code has? ASME Boiler and Vessel Code has altogether 10. Sorry sorry my mistake, it's 11 sections. Huh. That was pretty close. So, Ms. Onya adds another 10 points in her kitty. <laughs> Moving towards Ms. Barty. ASME Section 3 of the Boiler and Pressure Vessel Code is divided into two subsections Division 1 and Division 2. What are these two divisions? Well one of the division is rules for the construction of nuclear power plant. Other. Ah, uh, I don't remember. Are you sure that Section 3 Division 1 is for rules for the construction of nuclear power plant? Yeah. I'm. No. No dear that's not the correct answer. Actual answer is, Section 3 Division 1 is for rules for the construction of nuclear power plant components. And the second division is Division 2 which is code for concrete vessels and containments. So, you don't earn points for this one. A quick one to Ms. Onya. What is Section 11 of ASME Boiler and Pressure Vessel Code for? Section 11 of ASME Boiler and Pressure Vessel Code is for rules for in-service inspection of nuclear power plant components. Yeah, that's right. Now for Ms. Barty. As per subsection NC 3658.3 of the Nuclear Piping Code of ASME Section 3 Division 1, flange leakage analysis is done. In this method, the bolt thread dimensions are taken from which ASDM standard? It seems it is ASDM B16.5. No, that's again a wrong answer. The correct answer is ASDM B1.1 Unified Inch Screw Threads. So, Ms. Barty you are trailing behind Ms. Onya by 20 points now. Next question for Ms. Onya. What is the ASME standard for the large diameter steel flanges that is size range from NPS 26 inches through NPS 60 inches? ASME B16.5 It seems Onya 2 is getting carried away. She has given a wrong answer this time. 
The actual answer is APIB 16.47. APIB 16.5 is for pipe flanges and flange fittings less than 26 nch size. Time to catch up Miss Barty. In how many sections are ASDM materials and their testing methods divided? ASDM materials and their testing methods are divided into 15 sections, which further are subdivided into various volumes. Yeah. That's the correct one. Now the score gap has marginalized. This one for Miss Onya. Which section of the ASDM standards deals with the non-ferrous metal products? ASTM standard section 2. That's right. Now going forward towards Miss Party for the last question of this round. Which volume of ASDM standard is dedicated for non-destructive testing? ASDM Section 1 Volume 3 Well that again is incorrect. The correct one is ASDM Section 3 Volume 3 which talks about NDT. So, this ends up with the round 1. Coming to the scores. Ms. Onya has 40 points while Ms. Barty is lagging behind by 20 points and she is at 20 points. With this score, let's enter in round 2. Round 2, which is termed as Get an Edge, will also have 10 questions each and will have 2 options provided to the contestants. Correct answer will fetch 20 point. Get an Edge will carry a penalty of half of the marks associated with the questions, for every incorrect answer that is 10 marks will be deducted for each wrong answer. In addition, it is mandatory to respond to the questions and one cannot pass by. So, time for the first question and this time the first question is for Ms. Barty. Which section of ASME Boiler and Vessel Code lays down the rules for the construction of heating boilers, Section 1 or Section 4? ASME Boiler and Pressure Vessel Code Section 4 Yeah that's right. Section 1 lays down the rule for construction of power boilers and Section 4 lays down the rules for construction of heating boilers. Ms. Barty earns 20 point and her score is now 40. Both the participants are tied now at, this question is for Ms. Onya. ASME Boiler and Pressure Vessel Code Section 3 that is rules for construction of nuclear facility components in Division 1 lays down rules for Class 1, 2 and 3 components. In which subsection are Class 2 components covered? Subsection NB or Subsection NC? I exactly don't know the answer for this question. Miss Onya, you cannot pass this question and hence you have to go by one of these options. Well, in that case let me proceed logically. We have class 1, 2 and 3 components in division 1 of ASME section 3 code. If NB, NC are the subdivisions then NB shall stand for class 2 components. I'd like to go for NB. Well, I understand. That was a bit confusing. But you are wrong Miss Onya. NB covers class 1 components, NC covers class 2 and ND covers class 3 components. So you lose test for the incorrect answer Ms. Now, advancing forward with Ms. Barty. The Boiler and Pressure Vessel Code BPVC was created in response to public outcry after several serious explosions in which state of United States? Massachusetts or Pennsylvania? Well it was in Massachusetts where a fire tube boiler exploded at the Grover Shoe Factory in Brockton, Massachusetts. 1905 which resulted in the deaths of 58 people and injured 150. Then again in, 1906 a boiler in the factory of the P.J. Harney Shoe Company exploded in Lynn, Massachusetts. As a result the state of Massachusetts enacted the first legal code based on ASME's rules for the construction of steam boilers in 1907. Well, it seems you tend to know in detail about the history of code formation Ms. Barty. Yeah, I've been recently studying about it in Wikipedia. Well, this fetches you 20 points Ms. Barty. <laughs> Ms. Onya now it's your turn. Which piping code uses stress intensification factors SIF on reducers? ASME B31.1 or ASME B31.3? Power piping code ASME B31.1 has SIF on reducers. That's correct Ms. Onya.
Now, Ms. Barty. Which piping code is based on higher factor of safety? ASME B31.1 or ASME B31.3? ASME B31.1 has a higher factor for safety than compared to B31.3. That's correct. You earn another 20 points Ms. Barty. Now, for Ms. Onya. Which pipeline code has more stringent requirements? ASME B31.4 or ASME B31.8? Rules for B31.8 is more stringent than B31.4 in accordance with the more potential for damage from gases than liquids. That's correct Ms. Onya. Another 20 points gets added to your kid. Again, next one for Ms. Barty. Which API covers the minimum requirements for the axial compressors? API 617 or API 618? Axial compressors? Yes, Ms. Onya axial compressors. Well, as far as I know API 617 covers centrifugal compressors while API 618 covers reciprocating compressors. For axial compressors, are these centrifugal compressors or reciprocating recipro compressors? Sorry Ms. Barty. I will only respond to answers provided by you. So you have to opt for any of these APIs. Well, in that case I'd like to go by API 618. Are you sure Ms. Barty? No, it's just a guess. Well then I'm sorry to say that you will lose 10 marks for this incorrect answer. Now coming to 8th question of this round, meant for Ms. Onya. How many different basic design factor F for the location class exists in ASME B31.8? 4 or 5? Well, for location class exists for the gas transmission and distribution piping system. Sorry Ms. Onya. Though for location class that is location A, B, C and D exists in the ASME B31.8, 5 basic design factor F have been assigned. Location class 1 have 2 division division 1 and division 2 with 2 separate design factors. So, you lose your t t Coming to 9th question of the round for Ms. Barty. Which ASME standard is referred for the face-to-face -face and end-to-end -end dimension of valve? ASME B16.9 or ASME B16.10? Face-to-face -face and end-to-end -end dimension of valves shall be referred by ASME B16.10. That's correct Ms. Barty. You earn 20 points and move on to total of 90 points. Now, moving towards the last question of round 2. If you give the correct answer to this one Ms. Onya, score will be tied and will enter in tiebreaker. In case you couldn't, you will lose. So, Ms. Onya. In Appendix D of B31.3, the validity of stress intensification factor and flexibility factor data has been demonstrated for what D by T ratio? 50 or 100? Well, I know that SIF formulation has been listed in Appendix D of B31.3, but the limitation on validity I'm not sure of. Well, anyhow I'll give it a try so that score gets tied. Is the ratio 50? Are you questioning or answering, Ms. Onya? I'd like to go ahead with D by T ratio of 50. In that case Ms. Onya, I'm sorry to say that it is a wrong answer. By this you remain at the score of 70 and Miss Barty eventually wins. It was a nice comeback Miss Barty. Thanks to both of you for participating in this quiz show. Also, great thanks to the audience over there. <laughs>